Welcome to the Team Corelli one-page manual video series. For best results, download the PDF file from the link below before watching. Hello guys, in this video I will show you how to take out and reassemble the shock in your RC car. But before you watch this video, please check this one. It contains all of the basic information about how to work on this very specific RC car. I won't split these videos and make 10 for any other car uh, because basically the only differences will be the shock bodies, the shock shaft uh, and maybe this cap. Some of the cars have this plastic cap, that protector to, to protect everything and some of our cars uh, this cap is like replaced with only small plastic bashing. This assembly is exactly the same, um, you just only need to remember that this can be smaller or bigger. So in step number one we will take this shock out of the car uh, losing the screw on in the arm and one on the top. Of course I will do only one shock as every other shock is made exactly the same way. In this manual you can also see how to take out the shock standoff. It's only secured by this one screw at the very back. Uh, of course, if you are only rebuilding the shock, you don't have to disassemble this. But there's one thing I want you to remember and I will assemble it um, back right now. Uh, you want this um, shock standoff to sit here tight. If this rear screw is uh, loosened a little bit and if it's not tightened up fully, uh, the problem that can happen, the shock, can, the shock standoff can break. Uh, and you simply want to be sure that this is fully tightened, there's no loses, no gaps, because if there is, it will surely break sooner or later. Before we start with step number one, there are a few major things you can change in the shock and check the characteristic of the shock. Of course, it's a spring and the oil lips inside. When it comes to the spring, the, we have three different options. Medium, which is uh, um, factory fitted in most of our cars. Uh, that's good for overall bashing and it simply works on most sur surfaces. Uh, if you want something more plush and your suspension to be much softer, of course use the soft spring. And if you're up for hardcore bashing, big jumps, huge landings, uh, you will be looking for the hard spring. The second setup is of course the oil. And now you can use something much higher than CTT, like people like to call it harder, so let's keep to the harder oil. Uh, the harder oil is good for bashing, good for long jumps, high jumps, because the damping will be much bigger. And if you go for softer oil, the suspension will work more flash, it will ha absorb the um, bumps better, and of course it will give you a little bit more traction. So, it all depends on how you like to use your car, where you use your car, and where you drive. But for most of you bashers, I would stick with the stock setup, Check the manual, of course, uh, where you can see the off-road, um, like the general bashing, uh, hardcore bashing, and track use um, for this very specific shock. Each and every model have its own table, but of course they are pretty similar as the weight of the car is quite similar too. Right, so I guess the, the basics are covered. There's only one more thing inside, it's the piston. Uh, you simply should use the stock piston here. Uh, if you will drill the holes in the piston to make it a little bit bigger, uh, the flow of the oil will be a little bit uh, better. And then you would need to use higher uh, density oil, harder oil uh, to make the same dampening uh, situation. I don't want to go too much into details with this because most of you will use the stock um, pistons anyway. Please keep up to them and uh, just play with the spring and the oil, oil inside. So for step number one, take the spring out. And now you have the shock body in your hand. Uh, the one thing I want to highlight too is if you have the Team Corali tool set, you will have the stand that is made out of tool and the special plate for the shocks. Of course, for four of them, you can simply 
put them in here and if you are working on many shocks of course it comes very very handy uh, you won't be able to spill the oil out of it and if you want the bubbles to come off later that i will of course mention later it's best to just put them here you don't need to use any vacuum to take the oil out of course it's convenient but you can get away without it and simply put it on the stand wait a little bit and the oil bubbles will come off we will take out this spring retainer you just need to take it all the way down it takes a while And as you can see here you have o-ring inside it's made here to prevent the screws from loosening when while you are driving you want to make sure this o-ring is in good condition that nothing is wrong with it uh, if you want to check how it looks simply use some pinchy thing like the dentic tool and you can get the o-ring out of here while you are cleaning this uh, shocks never use solvent on on the o-rings and they will blow, they will pop, they will become bigger and no longer useful. Now it's time to take the top cap off. Remember the oil is inside here so it will pour away. Um, use some kitchen towels, fold it and pour the oil on the kitchen towel. It sits here pretty tight. So if you have enough force, you can do it with your hands. But if not, simply use the shock tool, hold it in here. And you can use this end that allows you to rotate the top easily. Of course, plenty of people use the screwdriver inside. It will work, of course. But on the other hand, you will scratch this area, you can bend it. I don't feel it's the best option, if you have a tool set, use it and make your life a little bit easier. So now the shock is open, of course the oil is still inside here, uh, if it's old just pour it out of, to the bin, uh, you no longer need it and it's no longer useful uh, if you want to rebuild your shock, so just throw it away. So in the top cup here, you can see there is this rubber part. You can take it out with your hands. Uh, I would not use anything pinchy because you can damage it and there will be no longer a seal. Uh, of course, this part works for are here for two reasons first of all it's a sealant between the top cap and the body and second of all you can see it's cylindrical shape so the air is trapped inside here when the shock works it changes the capacity that is inside because of the shock shaft that moves inside that's why you need this uh, little air gap um, for the shock to compress this air and make it up for the lack of space because of the shaft. Okay, that will be enough for Tech Talk. Do not use solvent to clean it, like in every rubber part. Just clean it with tissue paper with your hands and you will be good to go. So in step number five, we will take away the shock end from the shock shaft, take it all outside and release the piston. The one issue you might have, it's all covered with oil the shock pliers uh, with the standard set are plastic it's good for your screws it's good for your um, for your parts because they won't scratch it like the aluminium one but uh, it may happen that the force that you are putting here is not enough um, so what i like to do is take a little piece of paper fold it maybe even two times it do not really matters put it around the shaft and then squeeze it with the pliers. And now it will be much easier to take it off. Of course, using the same pliers, you can take this ball out of here. If nothing is damaged, if you don't need to 
uh, replace the shock, st uh, the shock um, end, you don't have to do it. Important notice, before you take the shock off, you want to lose this a little bit to make sure the o-ring decompresses and now you just can pop it from the top out. If you don't do it, there is a chance that you will damage the o-rings with the thread and you simply don't want to do that. And the final step, we will disassemble everything here, take the o-rings out and take also this little o-ring from here. As you can see the whole shock is now disassembled, it's nothing too crazy to do honestly, and now we will put it back together. Of course simply reversing the steps. But before we do, of course those are the parts that you need to clean. As I'm working on a brand new shock, there's not really much to do for me and I will simply use some paper to clean it over, uh, as I will be using the same shock oil that's absolutely not an issue for me. But if your um, shock is very dirty, there's plenty of dust between those um, threads and basically everywhere, you want to uh, clean it with the brake thinner or the second option is to use some jar but never a glass one, always plastic that also um, is good for solvent and just put the parts inside, shake the, shake the, shake the jar and you are good to go. Of course uh, the glass jar will be a trouble because it may break when you shake it and cut your fingers and you don't want to do it. The third and best option in my opinion is the ultrasonic cleaner, it will clean all between those edges I'm using the industrial one, small but industrial, it's all metal and uh, you, can, you don't worry about the solvent to, to destroy the sonic cleaner. Like the jewelry, jewelry line, uh, the plastic ones are good too, uh, but when you are using some sort of a solvent it will mostly damage the case. What is more, the uh, ultrasonic cleaners manufacturers don't like you to use solvents inside uh, because solvent is flammable, so always be careful, do not let that thing burn anything. So now I will just clean it with uh, paper, that's enough for me, uh, and assemble it back together. Of course, important notice, remember, never use solvent on the o-rings, any of them, any rubber part, it will break them, they will pop, they will bulb, like a, they will like uh, be, become two, three times bigger, and they will be no longer good to go, nothing will work correctly, and the shock will leak for sure. When you are starting this assembly, don't forget about two things, this one o-ring that comes here, uh, you are very likely to forget about this, I always do. Uh, that makes a good seal and moreover it prevents this bottom cap to come unscrewed during driving. And one more thing, um, you want to be sure that these inside o-rings are lubricated. Uh, for this you can use like 10k diff syrup, but we have a very specific product for it. It's a strong o-ring grease by Tim Corrali. Uh, you want them to be good, um, you lubricated good, uh, you want them to be um, filled with this grease because uh, you will be sure that the shock runs smooth, uh, the o-ring won't break during driving and of course the seal will be perfect and the oil won't leak. So now only remember about proper order, o-ring, this flat plastic spacer, another o-ring and the other spacer on the top. Also note orientation, it should be like this. 
and the bottom cap. Do not tighten it all the way down. We will have to put the uh, shaft back in and you will damage the um, o-rings with the shaft thread if you just tighten it all the way down. And now it's time to start refilling the shock. Uh, remember, now tight it up when you already put the shock shaft in. So just make it tight, but of course be careful not to kill the threads. So it's enough to tighten it with your hands, not with any tools. So now check if everything moves smoothly. When it does, you can start filling up uh, the oil to your shock. So what comes handy is of course our shock stand, if you have four of them it will look nicer probably. And now choose your oil, I'm going with the stock one, and fill it up almost to the end. Okay, so when you have it all filled up, move your shaft a few times, and as you can see all of the air that was trapped underneath now goes on the top do it a few times let all of the air bubbles come to the top and refill it back again all right so what you want to do now is basically wait and all of the air bubbles that are trapped inside here will come to the top. You can speed up, the, speed up this process by using some air pump and uh, that will make it far, far quicker. But of course, if you just simply wait and from time to time do it like this, just compress it a few times, the air bubbles will eventually disappear. So let me catch a break and we will be back when the air bubbles are out. Okay, so bubbles are out. As you can see, the oil is now perfect. So what you need to do is of course, take the top cap back into its place. So first you need to do is take this um, bladder back into its place. So all the way down inside here make it uh, even and equal all right and now to um, assemble it correctly you need to first compress your shock almost all the way down even all the way down is okay and now you put the top cap over it do it slowly and let the excess of the oil pour out of this little hole on the side here. Alright, screw it all the way down. And as you can see there's a little rebound here. What you need to do to get this rebound out is you need to compress it a few times. When it's at the bottom, unscrew it a little bit. It, you don't need to take it out completely. Now compress it back again. As you can see already some air and a little bit more of the oil comes out. And now screw it back again. As you can see, rebound now is significantly smaller. And you can do it a few times to make sure it's perfect. Alright, now you can see 
The rebound is super small, it's basically the um, rubber at the end that is popping this off. So now that's how the shock should be assembled. Now tighten it all back uh, with the pliers and of course our little plastic nut to make sure it's tight. Clean it off the excess oil with uh, tissue paper and basically assemble it all back together. But before we do um, put the spring on it, uh, I want to show you a little trick. We will just mark uh, this area with um, our CD marker to don't let you forget what oil you have inside. So first up you need to clean it and then mark and simply write what kind of oil you, you have inside. One more thing here, when you are assembling it back together, we have this special locking system and you just, when you assemble it, rotate it and now this stays firmly inside, so you won't be worried to lose it when you are driving. So as you can see, the shock is now all together, now we need to put it back onto the car. So that will be it for rebuilding the shock, but before we cut this video, let me summarize what we did and what I want to highlight and I want to make sure that you remember this from this video. So first of all, if you have your shock clean, it's new and it's basically all in good condition, you don't have to disassemble everything. What you need to do is simply first four steps, refill it with oil and you are good to go. The second thing, uh, I want you to remember that never put solvent on any rubber elements, on the o-rings, the bladder and anything else. Uh, they will um, be broken, you will damage it, you will damage the shock, oil will leak and you will be no longer good to go. The third thing, the choice of the oil is absolutely up to you. It depends on how you drive, where you drive and what do you simply like. If you are not sure what you want to use, please follow our manual that's our attach attached to the car and you can also see it at our showroom word.cori.com and you will be able to choose what's the perfect oil for you and of course drive, try, learn and see what's suitable for you. And one last highly overlooked thing is the rebound that we just did with pressuring the oil so the excess of the oil will, will left the, uh, the whole body. Um, I know it's mostly for racers and racers do really care about this and and if you want to make your car to handle like it should you need to take care about this. But of course you bashers also can benefit from it and because the car will handle better, it will jump better, land better, it will be easier to control and equal on all, on all four corners. So that will be it, thank you guys for watching. And I hope you will subscribe our YouTube channel to see more of the videos like this. Of course, if you need any help, please contact us via support.corali.com. If you want to see this car, any other car, and of course all, all of the manuals, informations, oils, and everything else, you can see ward.corali.com, that's our showroom. So thank you guys for watching, and see you in the next one. Team Corali, engineered to be the fastest.